Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good morning and welcome to Run It Back here on FanDuel TV. It's going to be one of those allergy days for Lou and I. How are you feeling today, Shams? I'm feeling, I'm feeling great. I'll, I'll pick up the slack for any yes. of us with low immune system today. Pick up but the I, slack. I was there a couple weeks ago, so I understand. There you go. It's not fun. It looks gross. Sounds even worse. Um, and our friend Chandler, I'm not even 100%. You're at home? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Why are you at home? Because I have a 9 a.m. flight, Michelle, in Burbank that I would not be able to get to to get to this golf tournament. It's an excused absence. What are you? What are you? The, what are you? The dean of students? Yeah, I am. I'm a hall monitor today, and I'm not. Yeah, what are you? A what are you? A safety patrol? Lou's not happy either. Lou, do you feel betrayed? You could have got to that plane. It's a yeah. private plane, for Christ's sake. Yeah. It's it, going to leave whenever you get semi, on it. It's semi-private. semi I don't even know what that means. Good God. All right, fine. We'll talk basketball. Here we go. Uh, games happen. Heat, Sixers, the play-in. It was a fun one. Sixers win this one, 105-104. They get the seven seed. Uh, Joel Embiid had his 23 points, 15 rebounds, but Nicholas Batum, the man of the night, season high 20 points, uh, six of 10 from the three. Jimmy Butler with 19, Tyler Hero with 25. Um, you know, this was a grind for this win, and now they sort of enter the fray here as we hit the playoffs. So, Lou, do you feel better that they had to kind of fight for this one, get their legs ready? How do you feel? Yeah, this was a good win for them. You know, struggles, struggles are not on the offensive end. You know, Joel Embiid, it's going to take time, right? He had so much time off. Yeah. At basketball is a rhythm thing. He's, he's trying to get his rhythm back in games that mean so much. Not really a lot of time to have, have a warm-up. But other than that, I like the fact that he showed up in the fourth quarter. 11 fourth quarter points, was able to lead those guys and give a lot of credit to Nicholas Batum. Uh, shot the hell out of the basketball, gave them an opportunity in a game that looked like it was going to go the other way. It felt like that. Yeah, Miami was throwing a lot of, lot of good looks at them, threw some zone at them. That zone was very disruptive for the 76ers until they adjusted to it and was able to get their zone offense going and get them out of it. And I think that's when the game um, started to shift for the Sixers. But listen, I, I feel better about it. They grinded out a win. Joel got another game under his belt, a good game under his belt, something mm -hmm. to build on. And so they can move forward with that. Yeah, that 39 points at half, Chandler, I was like, uh-oh, this is an ugly one. Yeah, it was ugly, and it was a low-scoring game. It's not what we got accustomed to seeing this year, but honestly, I'm with Lou. I feel better after watching this game. Having C. Joel played 38 minutes, first of all, was very promising. When, they, when the season on the line, they want that seventh seed. They want a shot at New York and not Boston, and they got it, and they had a huge game from Nicholas Batum, who's been doing this for a really, really long time. And I feel better because in a game that they did have to grind it out, that nobody really was efficient from the field, uh, they all had their struggles, they figured out a way to win. And they figured out a way to make plays, and they went to Joel Embiid late in the game, who made a lot of fourth quarter plays, who, like Lou said, scored 11 in the fourth, made a great pass to Kelly Oubre, to pretty much clinch the game. Um, I feel good about them. I feel really good about them. And the fact that Joel Embiid is this close to return and then just now back, and he's already playing 38 minutes, uh, I love because you've seen his he's comes up hobbling every now and then, but he's he's working through pain, obviously. But I think they're in a really good spot. And this is a team that was clicking early. And obviously, when you lose a guy like Joel, it really, really hurts. But now the fact that he's back and they got shooters around them where they, he's going to see a lot of double teams in the next series. It's all about whether those other guys can step up and make shots. Do you think, um, you know, Embiid with what he's done in postseasons past, and then obviously last night he got real hot there towards the end. Do you think he plays through his mind sort of the expectations that people have or this reputation that he's garnered, and then knowing that he's a little bit hurt, does that play into what he's going to do out there? No, he, he doesn't care. He, he, he knows he's struggled before, but this is a new season. He's a new player, and, and, and listen, if he's fully healthy, which I don't think he's ever going to be fully healthy for the rest of this season, but... He's one of the most dominating players that we have in the league. He's coming out. He was going to be the MVP this season, so he was going again. Uh, and there's nobody on this New York Knicks team that's going to stop him. So he's going to see double teams. He's going to see triple teams. He's going to just have to make the right, easy play in this next series and get these other guys involved. Like, can Buddy Heald knock down these shots? Tobias Harris and Kelly Oubre have got to be good. Tyrese Maxey struggled last night, but he's been their most consistent guy all year long. I find him to be extremely valuable in this matchup with Jalen Brunson in the next series. So Joel has struggled in the past, but I, I think this is kind of his, his turn. This is his team, and he's going to turn the corner this year. Do you have any concerns about Joel Embiid? 
Other no, than maybe he's not 100%. No, like I said, not at all. And the 6 76ers don't either. They understand that this is their best player. It's going to take some time. He's going to get he's going to get his rhythm back and they're not going to stop feeding him the basketball. You know, 6 for 17 is an inefficient night, but I want him to, I want him to get close to 20 to 25 attempts. You know, that's okay. going to give him a better opportunity to win games. And so was he efficient? Absolutely, absolutely not. But I wanted to get him even more touches, even more minutes um, to give them opportunities to win games against the Knicks. More? More. Well, you got Batum out there doing some things. What would you think about his That was play? good. That, <laughs> was, that was good for them to get some production out of their bench, you know, especially when it comes to playoff times. They're going to throw doubles at Joel and B. They're going to throw different looks at him. So to get that production, to have somebody that you can throw, you can play inside out, uh, and somebody to knock down shots and give you that depth that you're going to need in the postseason. This is a great start to the playoffs for Nicholas Batum. It's kind of fun sometimes. I listen to I listen to half a game on the radio and then watch the other half on TV. And when I when I flip it on and it's all Batum, I was like I was a little bit happy, shocked. I don't know, Chandler. What did you feel like when you saw him doing what he was doing? Yeah, I mean, listen. If they're getting 20 points from him, that's obviously a, a really <laughs> really positive thing he's always been this versatile player he's long he's active he's a great defender but if, if you're if he's making six out of ten threes they're going to be in a good spot because they have so many other guys that can score the basketball they have a you know a duo that can go get a bucket with Tyrese Maxey in transition with his speed and his athleticism and then Joel Embiid in the post who nobody can guard one-on-one -on -one. they've done a great job kind of surrounding shooters around them so when you get this action from Nicholas Batum it's just a cherry on top. I expect this from Buddy Heald to go nuts and hit seven threes in games. I expect this from Uber and Tobias mm -hmm. Harris. But this was a big time game from a vet player, and and they're gonna need him. They're gonna need him. I expect him to guard uh, Jalen Brunson a lot in the next season, uh, next series. I expect him to be a critical factor, especially with Covington out, Melton not playing, guys like that. It's a lot of these defensive uh, assignments are gonna fall on Batum. But yeah, if you're getting 20 points from him, they're gonna be tough to beat. Um, the, the one the big story that came out of this, of course, on the Miami side, Jimmy Butler. Uh, how bad is it? Jimmy Butler, one of the game's greatest competitors, you know what he did? He played the last three quarters of the game last night with a, what's feared now to be an MCL injury in his knee. Um, I'm told the expectation is he's going to be out for multiple weeks with that MCL sprain. That knocks him out of the play-in tournament game Ooh. on Friday against the Bulls. Um, and it's, it's obviously just a devastating blow to Miami, to their season. They've obviously had an injury riddled year, but Jimmy Butler, the fact that he somehow was able to play through an MCL injury uh, for the final three quarters, wow. that, was a, that was a nasty landing that Kelly Oubre had on his leg, uh, and it twisted, and he is now going to be out indefinitely at least multiple weeks. Hmm. How is, how, yeah. Chandler, how is he playing on that? I mean, he's tough as nails, we know that, but this is, when you say out a couple of weeks, that means he's out for the season, because yeah. even if they do manage to beat Chicago, right, they're, they're not beating the Boston Celtics without Jimmy Butler, so I have a lot of respect for Jimmy, again, playing through injury with the season on the line, this showed a lot of guts, and that was a nasty spill, you kind of knew right away that that was going to be something that was a little more serious uh, than, you know, just banged up, but... This is tough because this, everyone's been talking about the expectations of the Heat. Can they do it again? Are they just going to push this magic button and turn it on? And they showed flashes last night, but without Jimmy Butler, with him out for this next play-in game, I don't even see them getting by Chicago, let alone if they do that to get past Boston. So it's going to be tough, and it's just devastating news for the Heat. You know, there's one team that's probably disappointed that Jimmy Butler's out, but not really tripping, and it's the Miami Heat. When you, come, mm. when you come down to it, when you talk about heat culture, they're a plug-in and play team. They've always been tougher. They've always set themselves in, in that place. They don't feel sorry for themselves. Hey, somebody else has to step up and be the leader now. Even though Jimmy is out, obviously that's going to be a tough blow. But they're not sitting there worried about anything. I'm guaranteeing they're looking forward to this game now. And some other guys got to step up and play. I did notice Knicks fans, when your tweet went out last night, Knicks fans were like, damn it. Like, they could have had the heat without Jimmy Butler. That would have been a whole different world. Um, we got a guest coming on now, joining us from Philadelphia 76ers Center, Paul Reed. What's going on, Paul? Thanks for joining us bright and early. After Paul. Paul, oh, you just woke up, huh? Yeah, how you, yeah, did you just good wake morning, up? Good like that for <laughs> Two minutes ago. If you, <laughs> we can tell. That's all you need. Um, by the way, after a win like last night, which, you know, you got a lot more to go, obviously, but... Do you celebrate? Is it just business as usual? How does the night end? I mean, you know, go out to eat with some friends and, you know, get some rest, wake up today, 
get back to work. You know, it's supposed to be an off day, but, you know, got to go in the gym, get some recovery, you know, get a little workout in, some shots up, and, you know, get, get out of there. Yeah, that's how it is. No, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's only off day for about three people three. in the whole gym. Other than that, everybody else is locked in, everybody still getting some work in. Fair enough. Yeah. So, Paul, you guys now will face the Knicks in the first round. Was there multiple conversations how we want to get this win to play, to match up with the Knicks? Are you confident in that Knicks? And was it more that, or was it more to avoid the Boston Celtics in the first round to make this game so important last night? No, nah, man, I mean, I feel like we ain't ducking no smoke, but, yeah, we wanted the Knicks matchup, of course. Uh, that's the easier team, I guess. But, you know, it's going to be fun. You know, we match up pretty well with them. They got a great guard. We got a great guard. We also got Joel, you know, MVP. So, you know, like you said earlier, he's one of the most unstoppable guys in the in the league right now. So we, they're going to have to send triple teams, and he's going to get everybody else involved, I'm sure of it. Yeah, and the Nick, I mean, they got three out of four against you guys this year, but Joel only played one of those games. So now with him back playing 38 minutes last night, you guys got to be confident, right? Fully loaded? Oh, yeah, we're definitely confident. You know, I feel like that we could be any team in the league with him. We'll be fully healthy for sure. B-Ball Paul, so Joel last night, 23 points, 15 rebounds. Um, what have you learned playing with him? Is there anything that you feel like you can do that he can't do or anything that he does that you really, really wish you could do? Dang. I mean, that's a good question. I feel like it's a lot of things that he does that I wish I could do. But, you know, we got different roles out there. You know, he get he get paid to, to score the ball, get paid to go out there, play defense, get rebounds, and uh, finish at the round, you know. So right now we got different roles, so I understand that. And But, you know, I'm working up to it. You feel me? I want to be, you know, able to do what he do. You know, one of these days. But right now, you know, I'm cool playing my role for the team. Whatever the team need me to do, when, you know, I'm cool doing that. Paul, you know, Joel is, is one of the league's most prolific trash talkers and trollers. <laughs> uh, walk, me through, walk me through one of those practices where the, the coaches are, are letting the foul slide a little bit. That it's getting a little heated, one of those. How, how is Joel in practice when it comes down to the trash talk? Oh, man, he... He's definitely a big trash talker. You know, I'm one of those dudes where, you know, I'm not going to let him just score easily. You know, I'm going to fight. You know, we're going we gonna to bump. You feel me? And I <laughs> ain't letting that happen easy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's going to talk. You know, that's one thing about him. He's going to talk trash. And uh, I'm going to talk trash, too, right back at him. You know, we be going at it in practice. Uh, it's tough, though, when he so good at drawing fouls. And normally, we had, like, referees. At our practices, and uh, you know they give him every whistle. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> it's rigged. The practices the, the, are rigged. By yeah, the way, the, the referees in practice has never been a good idea. That's a crazy like. Yeah, what kind of referees? Well, uh, referees like, like real ones. Well, YMCA real as you can get. Okay, yeah, you can like get 1A? a couple of guys with some, with some shirts just to regulate practice. <laughs> it's like, it just keeps the it just keeps everybody off the coaches because usually the coaches ah. are the referees. They gonna get cursed yeah. out every play, so they just bring in ref referees to do it. Well, I'm here. The Joel Embiid, OG Ananobi stuff because they they've had some skirmishes, so I'm looking forward to that very much. Paul, are there any players in the league that you won't talk smack to? Is there anyone that you just would rather leave alone or or, or no? I mean. I ain't a big trash talker in general. You know, I let my game do the talking. But uh, I feel like, like, dude, like LeBron, uh, Kyrie. <laughs> I ain't. I talked trash to Kyrie one time. I ain't doing that again. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> Giannis, you feel me? You know, I, I ain't just chill. You feel me? Just to let my game do the talking. Um. So Doc Rivers was your head coach for three seasons. Now you have Nick Nurse, Paul. So what's been the biggest difference between Nick Nurse, Doc Rivers, so far for you? I mean, they both have completely different coaching styles. Um, and they also both have different defensive uh, strategies for real, for real. So that's been the biggest adjustment for me is understanding the different defensive uh, coverages that we use and the terminologies. You feel me? That's, that's the biggest difference for me. Paul, your game has really expanded with your first three seasons. You make three threes. This season, you had 21 threes. Is that just something that you wanted to make a point? Because the game's changing, everyone's taking threes. And 
something you just really practice on you really want to add to your bag? Yeah, that's definitely something that I want to, you know, add to the bag. But, you know, it's always been a part of my game. You know, it's always been in my bag. Now it's just getting more opportunity to, to display it. And, uh, you know, it's tough, you know, going out there, playing, and being a center, shooting threes. You know, you don't want to get too comfortable just settling for threes every possession. Cause, you know, you miss two threes. Now nah, it's like bad offense, so it's kind of just about taking the right shots and at the right time for for real. And that's the that's the hard part, you know, passing out them open shots. Where did you get the nickname B Ball Paul from? Who who was the first person to call you that? I got that and <laughs> middle school. Oh, oh, that's and a, I made it up myself. That's a real uh, that's a okay. real nickname. Self, self appointed B Ball Paul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> first IG name. Oh. What a name, though, you know? That's that's very marketable, Paul. You need a nickname, Shams. I don't know about that. I'm working on uh, it. Paul, you <laughs> played all 82 regular season games, one of a few players. 16 other players can say that. For you, how meaningful was it? Like, how exhausting is the day-to-day? -day? How many days were there where you're like, I don't want to play? And if there were, who talked you into playing? I mean, it was a couple games for sure, but my medical staff, is they kind of talked me into playing a couple times where I was sick and I didn't really feel like playing. And you know, my body wasn't feeling good, but, you know, I ended up fighting through it and just, you know, being there for the team because, you know, I understood how much, you know, they need, the team needed me at the time. So, you know, I had to fight through a little sickness. Hey, Lou, this is a serious question. Lou, have you ever played all 82 games? Because yeah, I did I don't think I have. <laughs> um, I can't recall. So, no. That's crazy. I, that is, that's I, I know I've played some high 70s. I don't think I've played a whole 82. 80, all 82 is something. That's tough. Doesn't and happen. Broadcasters anymore. don't even do all 82 games yeah. for the team. You eluded 81? Is that what? You had 81 twice. I think, I think I Chandler did 76. Twice. 76 games for Chandler. Mm, Slide that sounds about And Chandler's crazy. not here today, Paul, so it kind of makes sense. He sort of mails it in uh, <laughs> repeatedly. Load management, Paul. Load management, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, let's talk about tweets for a second. Back in March, you tweeted, I played like shit with the face palm emoji, which A, I kind of find funny because now you're putting it out there, which you know the fans can can go along with. It got a couple thousand likes. What does playing like shit mean to you? I mean, you know, just going out there, turning the ball over, uh, not finishing at the rim, missing my opportunities. And, uh, you know, on defense, you know, missing coverages and, you know, <laughs> hey, my plus minus, you know, I'll be looking at my plus minus. If it's really bad, then, you know, I always feel like I didn't play well. I love that you put it out there because now they're like going to agree with you and, and it gets worse. Um, let's talk a little touchdown pass you had to Buddy Hilde a few days ago because this, this is a nice moment. Was there Boom. ever a time where you thought maybe football? Oh yeah, that was my first that was my first passion. You know, I wanted to go to the NFL, play tight end, wide right receiver. All right. But then once I hit middle school, that's when I start, you know, really becoming a hooper. That's when I became B ball, Paul Ferrer. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, this like the summer you signed a three year deal uh in Utah, which mm. the which Philly ended up matching, which I think was a great move by them, but <laughs> how hype are you that they matched and you didn't have to go move to Utah? Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> He's always God. picking fights with cities, man. <laughs> Oh, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, when you signed there, were you hoping that they matched, or was that something uh, that that would be? A, that's a drastic change. That is a drastic change. Ain't nothing in Utah for real. But you know, I was I was preparing myself mentally to make it the best of the situation. But I was extremely excited. You know, they waited to the last minute to match the offer. <laughs> it's kind of rude. It's like torture a little bit. They're skiing. And stuff. Uh, last yeah, season. You're not allowed to ski, Michelle. I know, you're not allowed to. God, that's a great point. Okay, never mind. There's nothing. <laughs> um, last year, you called Anthony Davis a, quote, big flopper. And of course, that becomes a thing because we live for moments like that. Did you ever hear from him? Did you regret it? Like, would you do it again? Nah, I ain't regret it, but I wouldn't do it again either. <laughs> you know, I feel like, you know, I got to give him. I got to give him some more respect in that. Uh, you know, he's one of the best players in the league. And, you know, I got, I play with Joel, so I, I shouldn't call it flopping. I should <laughs> call it, you know, he's good at drawing fouls. You feel me? Like, he's a he's a great player. And, uh, and I, I peeped that the next game, he tried to go at me right away. You feel me? When we played the Lakers the next day. 
<laughs> yeah, of course. Well, is there anyone that is a great flopper still? I mean, you, Lou, you could say it first. Who's a good flopper in the I'm league not, right I'm now? I'm out the game. You're not even play, You can say it. I'm, I don't even know. Chandler. Mm. I know we got dudes that are good floppers. I mean, there's oh, you know the guy that's LeBron. <laughs> Flops, Chris Paul, Flops, CP, I mean, uh, Joel, he's a little exact, Luca, Luca. I mean, you know, everyone knows who's the, you know, who's the actors out there. But honestly, it's part of the game. You have to master that. It's, yeah, it's an irritating It's definitely one. part of the game. It's definitely part of the game. Definitely part of the game. Paul, we appreciate it. Um, best of luck the rest of the way. Not too much, you know, playing the Knicks. Be ball, uh, Paul. Appreciate you. <laughs> See you soon. Coming up, Hawks, Bulls, and we got some scoops with Sean. Run it up, you run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. Run it up. Late start for them, by the way. Last night, Bulls, Hawks, uh, they eliminate Atlanta from the plan. 131 to 116. Kobe White. A career high 42, 9, and 6. Uh, Vucevic had 24 points. DeJounte Murray with 30. Look, we're going to start with the Hawks here, only because they're 20 and 31 with Trey and DeJounte Murray in the lineup together this season. And a lot, this even came up during the game, was what happens next, Lou? Do you keep one? Do you keep both? Who do you keep if you, if you choose just the one? I'm, I'm torn. Obviously, Trey is someone I've worked with. I've been part of the Hawks organization. Um, I was a part of that Eastern Conference Finals run. Um, and, the mm -hmm. core, and the core of that group is still there, you know. And so I want to see them be successful. I think they had the tools to do it. Um, I, don't know what, I don't know what went wrong. You know, I don't, I don't know what went wrong, whether it was a chemistry thing or trying to work in Quinn Snyder or, or what. So it's a, touchy, it's a touchy thing for me. I want to see Trey be a lifelong Hawk. Yeah. Um, I think he's deserved that. He's done probably everything that he can do being in the position that he's been in, that he's been put in to um, lead a team, to be the face of an organization, be the face of the city. You know, Trey Young, we consider him in Atlanta one of us, you know, one of our, one of our guys. And, and DeJounte has come in and, and give them, give, given the, the Hawks, you know, a spark, something to be excited for. But they hadn't figured it out together um, as, as a unit. Personally, I would like to see them try one more time. I okay. understand that's not how this business works, especially when you've seen a level of success and you know that your team is capable of it and, you know, they fall short of that. Some decisions have to be made. So um, I'm just going to be a fan in this one and just see what happens. See what happens. But, yeah, but I would love for Trey and DeJounte to get another opportunity, another crack at it. But, you know, this business isn't a patient one. So it is, it's an I'm interesting. Sure something will happen. It's like a weird dilemma. I mean, you hear the Trey Young rumors, whether or not any of that even comes to fruition. Chandler, if, if you were GM, do you give it one more shot? Do you, do you make a move? I probably shot both of them and just see what I can get. But you look at Trey Young's numbers this year, the dude averaged like 26, 11, and 3. So whatever it is, if it's personality-wise, if it's the history that he's had with his coaches, his teammates, I don't know what it is, but the kid is a hooper, right? And I played with him as well in Atlanta my last year. He's a good dude. He, 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 I think every year he gets older, he's going to mature more and adapt. I think he came in as such an electric uh, scorer and shooter and, you know, uh, we'll focus a little bit more on that, but he's a really good dude. He's a good teammate, and I think his time has just ran its course in Atlanta. I'd like to see him somewhere else. Uh, honestly, uh, he's so talented. Um, and again, this year he he gets a raw he gets a raw deal from media from everybody because he's not a bad guy and he always produces. And he might not be the most efficient player, but he's fun to watch. He's excited, and he's an act an absolute. Hooper. So whether it's in Atlanta or not, I, I'm cheering for Trey Young because I, I really do like him. But the Hawks, just in general, they confuse me because you look at their <laughs> team. Even, even last night, I mean, they had they were missing Akangwu, Sadiq Bey, Jalen Johnson, and AJ Griffin's been out for for a long time. Those are all valuable, valuable players. So it's not like this like a dumpster fire in Atlanta where they need to panic and rebuild. They have the assets. They have. Uh, DeAndre Hunter and Bogey and Capel, they have so much talent. They have 10, 11, 12 players deep on this talent that you would think would transition into wins this year, and it just didn't. And they had some guys in and out of the lineup, so I don't think they need to panic. I do think they move a couple of those pieces that a lot of other teams would like, and you can get a lot back for. So depending on the market, what it is for Trey, what it is for DeJounte, what you can get for either of them, I think you take a good look at it, but they're in no position really to panic because they have so much talent 
talent. They're young. They have bigs. They have guards. They have scores. And they have a lot of assets that other teams want. So I think they're in an okay position, but I definitely expected a way better season this year from them. I guess there's no harm, no foul in shopping around and just seeing, right? I mean, that's not... That's always seems like the smart move to do. Anytime you have the talent that they have, two guys, one guy on a max contract, one guy on a significant $100 million contract, and you fall short of expectations, and you what's their record, 20 and 31 with those two guys in the lineup together, you have to evaluate everything. I think mm -hmm. the Hawks are going to take some time, uh, really go through meetings internally, and figure out what's the best course of action. We know they shopped DeJounte Murray at the trade deadline. They had discussions with several teams, including the Lakers, at the deadline did not move him. But I think when you look at Trey Young's future, when you look at DeJounte Murray's future, clearly something is, is going to have to give in Atlanta. The one thing, though, to keep an eye on is Quinn Snyder. That aspect, this is, he just finished his second season in Atlanta. He's got, I believe, three years left on his contract uh, at $8 million per year. Uh, there's been some conversation around the league. What's his status like? He's committed there. He's going to be there. And his relationship with, with Trey Young has been strong. So where does that leave this organization as they make these hard decisions? This is going to be an important offseason for Landry Fields in that front office. I mean, he has those sweet red frames. Uh, he's committed to the uniform and the color scheme, <laughs> and I, I appreciate that from him. If, if you trade, like, is there a world or a team? Let's just play hypotheticals. If you do decide to trade DeJounte and or Trey Young, are there teams you'd rather see them go to? Hypothetically speaking, I would like to see a reunion with DeJounte Pop and, wow. and Wimby. I think that'll be a nice. I think that'll be a nice start to get some veteran guys around Wimby, um, give him a score, give him a guy that's going to defend, um, and just a, a hmm. like you said, another dynamic player that can go out there uh, and help Wimby win some games. I, I would like to see that reunion. What about you, Chandler? Yeah, I like that. I like the Spurs, and I like the Orlando Magic. They're going to have a lot of flexibility. They have a lot of money. They kind of need a point guard to play with Franz Wagner and, and Paolo. Uh, so I like both of them there. He could easily go to a bad team. Detroit has a lot of money. Utah, Toronto. What's crazy is Oklahoma City have a lot of assets and $35 million this summer. So it's crazy. I don't think either of them are a fit with SGA and, and Jalen Williams, but it's just crazy that they have that much money. But there's a lot of opportunities out there, but the two big ones for me are San Antonio and Orlando because – I think that's the need that the team needs, and I think it'd be a good fit. Chandler, that's for, that's for either or, or DeJounte? Honestly, I think if there's one person that could really get through to Trey Young, it's Pop. I, I honestly, I, as, as good as DeJounte was there, I like Trey Young to, to San Antonio. Put him with Wimby, the way he passes, the way he shoots the ball, and can expand the floor for him, and with those other assets with Vassell and Kellen Johnson and Sohan. I love Trey Young there. Obviously, DeJounte's been there. He's comfortable. He can fit there, too, but... I like either of them to either of those two teams. I think they'd be more <laughs> successful there than, than both back in Atlanta. All right, we're going we're gonna to stay on you on that one, Shams. I imagine that's going to be a fun offseason to, to keep an eye on. Kobe White, though, did have the night. He was the man. He had 42 points. It was very, very impressive, Chandler. What stuck, what stuck out to you watching him play last night? You know, maybe I just haven't watched the Bulls a lot this year, but this kid is dead. Nice, Lou. The things he was doing with the ball, he literally was playing like Kyrie Irving last night, the way he was handling the ball. Look at this move right here. And then just body slapping the glass. Like, he, he, he was unbelievable. And he's a big guard. He can shoot it. Everything you hear, he's just the best dude, the best <laughs> kid ever. But this was a big, big stage, a huge game for them. Um, and to go... 15 to 21. And Shams, did I hear this right? These stats don't count for his career, like his season. Yeah, the playing career. tournament, That's the stupid. in season tournament. That yes. is bogus. Are these not official games? I don't understand. I don't get it. They, I feel like they didn't think that through. Well, Everybody. playing tournament, I guess you could make the case it's like a quasi playoff game. The weird thing is like the in-season tournament when AD, what did, what did Anthony Davis have, like 40 and 10 in that in-season yeah, tournament? Yeah, like that's But that didn't count. That you can't, in right. season I agree. So these, these, uh, also, uh, these performances are in season. So if you get if you get a, if you get a tech, do you get fined? Because exactly. it's not a real game. And if you sit your entire team because it's not a real game, are you gonna get in trouble? Yeah. Like that yeah, kind of seems a little. Yeah, I don't know, some gray area because I, I want my forty-two to go in. Right, the book. Seriously, <laughs> yeah. Kobe should. Yeah, but regardless, I didn't know he had this. I know he's in contention for most improved player, but wow, what what a performance! There, there's nothing he can't do out there. He is he is an elite player, and it's funny he just signed an extension, I think, for you know twelve million a year. He hadn't done that. What is he, what is he looking at this summer? You know what I mean? This kid can absolutely go, and and I loved watching him play. And I think he's gonna do it again. And what I think they're if, gonna and I think they're gonna get in. What if when Lonzo Ball comes back? What happens? 
Yeah, that's a big whatever. Yeah, that's a, I mean, a that's big a big whatever. What also, Zach uh, Zach Levine. Yeah. This kid is always he's always had game. They've just been stock. They've been stockpiled with guys that mm -hmm. can score the basketball at those guard positions, and so he's kind of been an afterthought. Now that he's getting an opportunity with injuries, he's being able to show his star power and what he's capable of. Yeah, they did the uh, his draft class, and it's sort of like it was just quietly he was the seventh pick. I was like, oh well, yeah, maybe they, we shouldn't be shocked. They redid mine too, and I was like a top ten pick. I was a second rounder, but did that make you feel? How'd that make you feel? It's like I, I've, I've been that player the whole time, but let it out, Lou. Yeah, let it out, so. Lou. He's gonna let it out. Uh, Alex Caruso left in the third. That's again. No, these injuries are starting to annoy me, Shams. Is this one a bad one? Yeah, he re-aggravated the same left ankle that's been bothering him for quite some time now. I think his status for tomorrow very much in question. Mm. Uh, obviously, this is a guy that's in contention for all defensive team right now, so tough loss for the Bulls if he cannot play. But listen, Miami's going to be without Jimmy Butler, so this, these are two teams that are going to be potentially dealing with uh, pretty major injuries. That uh, It's like Duncan Robinson didn't play. Like This is going to be a weird one. But yes, it's a rematch of last season's play-in game. And of course, we know that Miami did win that one. They split their series this year. Lou, who wins? Chicago Bulls. Okay, then. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm really okay. confident in, in the Chicago Bulls. I've, I've, Chandler's been on the Miami Heat train. I haven't been on the Miami Heat train. Now that Kobe White is playing out of his mind, and we haven't even mentioned DeMar DeRozan yet. DeMar no. DeRozan was shooting threes. Um, being that anchor, being that steady player that he's always been, Vucevic was playing well. Chicago just looked like they were prepared for, for the task at hand last night. They looked motivated. Um, they looked like they were confident. And I think they have the same thing going into this next one. I don't know if they want their season to end in Miami for a second year in a row. What happened to the Kings the other day in the playing tournament? Their season ended in Sacramento uh, to the Warriors last season, then they beat them. Revenge. I don't know if the Bulls want to lose at home again. Also, that crowd they last night in Chicago again. was great. They were, yeah, it was like you old know school. It, you know, this, this, this format, like a New Orleans team who just loses and then a Miami team, I feel like they're so deflated after this. And mm. then you got Sacramento and Chicago that are going there buzzing on a high with momentum after playing really well. I like both of these teams to get in that weren't, that were the underdogs. And so I like Sacramento and I like Chicago on this. I can't unsee what I saw last night. Jimmy Butler going down. Uh, is a major, major factor. I don't love that Caruso's probably going to be out because they need his defensive presence and his leadership out there. But, yeah, give me give me, give me, me Kobe White in the Chicago Bulls <laughs> against the Heat. Kobe I'm all, I'm White all over in the Chicago Bulls. We did not have yeah. this happening. I, I kind of no. love the surprise. <laughs> I'm not going to like too many injuries, though. Uh, we do have some scoops. I like today's scoop, Shams. This is a good one. Caitlin Clark, rookie phenom, <laughs> soon to be playing for the Indiana Fever number one overall pick. She is nearing a multi-year lucrative eight-figure deal with Nike as her shoe company. She will also have a signature shoe with Nike. So Sabrina Ionescu, Brown Stewart, also WMA players with signature shoe deals. And it's an eight-figure deal, Michelle. That, that means bad. I'm not amazing at math, but that's at least $10 million. At least 10. I'm told it is well beyond that $10 million Even mark. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Under Armour, Adidas, I'm told, also made sizable offers. Stephen Curry was involved in the Under Armour pitch, which is notable. Really? He has Curry brand with Under Armour. He was involved uh, with That's that pitch. Funny. Him and Caitlin Clark, I think, are beginning to develop a relationship, but she is not signing there, and she will soon be official with Nike. I love it. Do you? I, I do. I love it. I, I'm, I'm a coach. I'm on the women's side. I am part of this this community. So to see these women getting their just due, having an opportunity to provide for themselves at the level of uh, uh, other NBA players and top stars, I'm encouraged for for young women to come. So I, I love this. Oh, can't wait to see. Uh, are the did the Sabrina shoes a big shoe, right? Like that one are does they, well in the NBA as well. Yeah, yeah. NBA players guys, wearing yeah, it. Yeah, the Sabrinas are actually the team shoe of um, my girl. Shout out to Winners United That's Basketball. Awesome. Um, all of my girls wear the Sabrinas. I'm sure I'll be able to get them a uh, pair out of Caitlin Clarks <laughs> as well. And, and we're going to keep motivating and keep uh, encouraging these young ladies to strive. And, and this is a great example of why you should. Eight figures, Chandler. Blue. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm on the side of people getting paid. And all these people <laughs> making fun of CP her salary, money. Her, 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 her WNBA I know. Eat shit, because she's <laughs> making more money than you, so keep hating. She's changing the game. She is awesome. She deserves it. 
And the and, and listen, she's gonna kill in the in the WNBA. I think she's gonna have a great rookie year. But this is awesome. I hope this is just the beginning of these girls getting these massive deals because their salary is crazy. It's dumb. so they're gonna find other ways for them to make money. And this is a huge start for you know women in general and then the WNBA because she got a bag. So keep laughing at her salary, but yeah. she's paid. I don't even know if we're laughing at their salaries yeah. or if well, it was more like people didn't know how just how low. The salary is in the WNBA. The, I think that's the great part of about having great players. You bring awareness yeah. to things. You know, for years there's been a conversation around WNBA players' salary, accommodations, yep. um, how they travel, uh, traveling commercial. When the NBA is mm. traveling private, all of these things are now we're starting to bring uh, light to it. We're starting to be knowledgeable of it, and so I love it. The game is growing. Um, it's mm. getting to a point where it's fascinating. And people that usually don't watch women's basketball, they're part of it now. They're part of the show. Anytime you get <laughs> criticized, anytime there's trash talk, congratulations, you are part of the show. It's happening. People are, are, are tapping into what's going on, and I absolutely love it. I, I travel week in and week out with so many young, um, as aspiring WNBA players, and mm -hmm. they're glued to the television watching these college games. So if they can translate over to the professional side, I think that, that makes the game so much better. Hey, and Lou, the and Lou, you know what's crazy is, is Nike's cheap. If they're paying her this, you know she's getting bags from every other company Absolutely. too. It doesn't it doesn't stop right here? Absolutely. That's that's the point that Chandler makes is that beyond just this deal that goes beyond ten million dollars, yeah, well beyond ten million dollars, there's several deals that are part of uh, Kaylin Clark's business portfolio, as there is with Sabrina Inescu, as there is with Brianna Stewart. Um, Kaylin Clark is making several, several, several millions off Good the court. Good for her. Right Good for her. So shout out shout her representatives out. who are working on her business portfolio. Yes, making money's cool. Um, th I don't want to go back to the injuries, but unfortunately it seems like that's what the big story is going to be as we move forward. Zion News? Yeah, we said yesterday. Uh, it was a hamstring injury yesterday. The Pelicans say it is a strain in his hamstring. He's going to be out at least two weeks. I mean, uh. just unfortunate he's going to be out in, in, in their playing game tomorrow against Sacramento. And he was playing the best basketball of his career. I think we can all agree on that. 40 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists in that game against the Lakers after being 3-1 and one against them, losing the way they did in the in-season tournament game the last day of the regular season. But now Zion Williamson will be lost for, tonight, uh, for Friday night's game and possibly well beyond that. I just like the to season. say that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. It's like that's just such a big one. And I really do think, I know we'll never know, but I feel like the Pelicans were going we're gonna to pull that one out. And then that happened. All right, we'll take a quick break uh, when we come back. He's back with some more advice. Michael Bowling joins Run It Back. Run It Back, yeah. Run It All. Run It Back, yeah, yeah. Run It All. Run It Back. Michael Bowling is back from BR Betting. Uh, welcome, Michael, by the way. Yes, okay, so we're going to get right into it because we, we just mentioned the Zion of it all, and they had the tough loss against the Lakers in that first one. Now, no Zion as they face the Kings. Weirdly, though, the odds at FanDuel right now are just Kings by a point and a half. So, hmm, I, I would have thought that would be bigger. What side are you on? Uh, I'm on the Kings minus one and a half. Like you said, no Zion, that's pretty tough to overcome. And, you know, I heard Sham saying he was playing the best basketball of his career. I think he was challenged in that last game, and he stood up to it. But I think the Kings are going to be too much. They're coming off a high. They slayed the dragon of the Warriors. And I really think they're going to be able to control the paint. So give me the Kings minus one and a half. And I also lean over 212 and a half. The number was up at 214 this morning. Yeah. It came down a little bit, but the Kings love to play at that high pace and we love to watch it. So <laughs> I'm thinking it's going over. CJ McCollum's the X factor here. If he can play much better than he did last game, shoot his normal, you know, 20, 25 points, this might be close, but I like the Kings. Yeah, Lou, it's weird, too, because the Pelicans have lost six straight at home. That's probably people wondering why the Kings will be favored on the road. That's probably a big part of it. Who you got? I like the Kings on, I like the, Kings on the road. You know, Chandler alluded to it the last time we were talking about it. When you get that big win, um, especially against the Golden State Warriors, it's like a monkey off their back, right? So they're going down to New Orleans with a lot of confidence, feeling like they can win this game. And New Orleans, where's your fan base? The first play-in game, Dude. the seats were empty. They were 12 they, bucks. They, the excitement wasn't there. They were affordable. <laughs> Come down and support this basketball team. It's important, especially if you want them to be successful. And so I, I, I like the Kings in this one. Zion is out. We don't know what's going on with B.I., whether that's a minutes restriction thing or that was a coaching decision. But he oh. he's has to be in at the end of games. But I still like Sacramento down there. Chandler, what about you? 
Yeah, I'm all over Sacramento. I think it's just New Orleans is deflated, man. Last Sunday they could have clinched the sixth seed, and that now they got Brandon Ingram not playing at the end of games. They got Zion out. Uh, they've lost six in a row at home. That, that's tough to overcome. And Sacramento is the exact opposite. They're, they're coming on a high, like like Michael just said. They just knocked off the big brother, the bully that they could never get over the hump with with the Warriors. Um, I just love the Kings. I, I know I, it was a huge blow to have Herter and Monk out, but when you see guys like Keegan Murray step up and you have that duo and you can get some contributions from other players, Keon Ellis, Davion Mitchell, those guys were huge in the first round game. I just think they're going to be too much and the Pelicans are just too deflated right now. Um, the also, my, I love this, by the way, Michael. I like these kind of little prop bets. First bucket. <laughs> I try so hard and I never get this one right. So give us a couple of options to look at. Uh, so my two picks, first, I'm going to start with CJ. Um, he's plus 600 on the Pelican side. I, I truly believe, like I said earlier, if they want to have any chance to win this game, they got to get him going. And I think they got to get him going early. They do run a lot of pick and pop with, uh, with Jonas Valanciunas, who scores a lot. So if you want to take a flyer on that also on the <laughs> other side, Keegan Murray, you giving me plus a really? thousand on a guy who just went berserk in the last game. Like all he's got to do is step out for a three. He knocks it down. You turn your 10 bucks into a hundred, <laughs> hundred into a thousand, whatever you got. So those are my two picks, CJ and uh, Keegan Murray. Mike, I had, uh, <laughs> I had Keegan Murray as well because uh, and Chandler can tell you this, usually your first bucket, you know, you have your superstar guys, they're going to get 25, 20 to 25 touches anyway. Yeah. So their first play usually goes to a role player that you want to get going. Keegan Murray being that guy that can shoot the basketball, he's going to need that confidence and that momentum going into that game. I was gonna pick. I was gonna pick Keegan Murray to get the first shot. Well, you still can in real life, Lou. Plus a thousand. I mean, you might <laughs> as well give might. it a shot. Um, look, take a look at Bills. Bills Heat coming up next. Um, yep, you know Chicago looked. I mean, they looked good last night. I don't know what else to say. They go down to South Beach now. No Jimmy. The odds right now have the Heat favored by three. Michael, are we are we going with that? So, oh, they have one and so a half here. Yeah, so the line moved since this morning. Uh, it came down after the Jimmy news. But listen, I'm taking the Bulls. I was I was at the game last night. I bet the Hawks. That was a bad bet um, because the Bulls do this this time of year. So the Jimmy news is a really big is a really big deal for Bulls fans. He normally crushes us. He's going to be out. So give me the point and a half. I'll take it. I'm going to plug my nose. They have a way of getting us back invested in laying an egg, and I know that you guys who've played in the league probably know that better than me. So as a fan, I'm going to ride with my hometown team, but definitely love the under here. This is going to be a Big Ten-style rock fight. There's probably not going to be a lot of points in the first half. Under 208 feels like a good bet to me, but like I said, plugging my nose with the Bulls. All right, I like this. All right, we're going to do some same-game parlay. Um, We've been trying to do this. Have we kept track of how good we've been at it? You know what? I don't care. I don't. Don't tell me. Uh, Michael, you, you go first. Uh, so my two picks, they'll both be Bulls picks. Uh, DeRozan <laughs> have 25. My guy's been going crazy. He's been the stalwart in this offense. I mean, he's the guy that can get you the mid-range bucket whenever you need it, and he's got that experience. And then on the other side, or not on the other side, but on the same side, Vooch to get 10 boards. He's the best rebounder we got. Uh, Bam's a little undersized, even though he plays really, really hard. I think he's going to have to have a legacy game if they want to keep this close. But give me DeMar 25 points, Vooch 10 boards. Hopefully we can catch this SGP this right, week. I, I like it. The homer bet has been placed on Michael's <laughs> behalf. Um, Chandler? Um, I am going to go Bulls money line. I'm with Michael here. I think when a team that's that hot, that has a big game like this, um, like Sacramento, like Chicago. I think it's just too much for a team to overcome with with Miami, with Jimmy Butler out. I, I got to go with Chicago money line here. I think that's good value. I would have loved it um, if staying at three points down to one and a half <laughs> means a lot of people going on the Bulls, Jimmy Butler out. I love the Bulls money line. Dang, are you doing Bulls too then, huh? We're doing I all am, Bulls. I, I, I like it. Yeah, I think we're all in on the Bulls. I, got, I, I like Bulls money line, and I also like Kobe White to have another big night. Momentum and confidence are two big things. Huge night last night. I think he carries that over into uh, down there in South Beach. Kobe so. White in the Chicago. Lou, you know I've been on Kobe White all year all long. All year you've been, yeah. Chandler. We know. Yeah. We know. Kobe, Kobe White and the Chicago Bulls sounds crazy, though. Shout out to DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> but but for, for 48 hours, he deserves it. So Kobe White in the Chicago Bulls. Michael, yeah. appreciate the time. Good luck to Bring your Bulls this weekend. Back, yeah.
<laughs> we'll be right back. We need it. I know. We're, we're thinking positive thoughts. We'll be back. Run it back. Yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Jobs. <laughs> now you got a scoop. What happened? This is one I know Lou will, will love. Shea Gills Alexander has uh -oh. agreed to a new contract extension. It's a massive deal. With Converse, it includes the title of creative director Ooh. as well as Converse Basketball. And I'm told his new signature shoe will be releasing in 2025. We've been talking about it for the last couple weeks. Uh, he's, he was set to be a shoe free agent in September. But obviously, Converse wanted to bring him back, wanted to give him a new deal. He's earned it. He's an MVP right. candidate this year. Him, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, Jason Tatum, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brunson. I think we'll see those six guys somewhere in that MVP race in whatever order. But Che Gilles Alexander has firmly put himself as one of the faces of this league. And now Converse, Converse. and him are Converse moving forward. I like this. Converse is great with that. I was signed, I was signed to Converse back in the day. And they were trying to get in the basketball space. And creative director, yeah. I said, look, I'm not wearing them if they look like shit, right? And so they were like, well, <laughs> you design them yourself. And so I'm sure they've given Shay the, uh, the same lineage where he can just design his clothes, design his gear. What does that mean, wear. though, design it yourself? Like, are you actually taking a pencil to paper and Absolutely. scribbling? So they're, really? they're bringing some prototypes, kind of some, some blanks, yeah. um, just to give you a canvas to start with. And okay. then you kind of go, well, I want to put a scrap on this one. I want to add this. <gasps> I want to take that That's off. Fun. And then you start working through the colorways. You start working through the specialty games. Then you start going through the, uh, the merch, the, the clothing that you want to want to go with it. So, you know, everything that he puts on that's going to have that Converse star on is going to be tailor-made for him. And he is, like, he's very into the fashion, so this oh, will yeah. be really fun. He's got the oh, Skims yeah. deal. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, that's right. He does have and the now, Skims deal. And now he's got a full deal. And this, and I, I'm told this is a pretty lucrative contract that he signed. And uh, <laughs> he's going to be the face of Converse basketball for a while now. It's amazing. <laughs> Chandler, is Chandler still there? Yeah, I can oh, hear him. I can hear him, I can hear him grunting yeah, I can back hear him there. Grunting like an animal. <laughs> um, if you had to design a shoe, do you think you'd be good at designing a shoe? From oh, I would need I would need some help for sure. But <laughs> Jay's a trendy dude, man. He's a cool, stylish cat. So I feel like this is a perfect fit. Obviously, his game on the court does its own talking, but fashion's a big part of his brand and his life. So having deals like this where he does get the creative design, where he's in the war rooms kind of designing this, giving his input so they're not just giving him a shitty product, um, it's fun. And it's a great brand. I love Converse. This is one shoe I'm actually excited about that I would probably wear just because I feel like mm. everything this dude does is, is pretty cool. So I love this, and I love to see him, uh, you know, get financially uh, paid lucrative. as well. It's a good word, lucrative. We just want to show one uh, one play from last night, um, I guess as we say goodbye to Atlanta. But there was a moment. I knew this would be in the show today because as soon Ooh. as it happened, I was like, oh, oh Lord. I'm That's pretty nice. Oh my call it a runway dunk. Must that Once be the best? Once a guy best can ready up his legs and come at you full speed, just get out the way. But he didn't get out of the way. I mean, he, he didn't, didn't get out. out. He didn't follow the rules. Yeah, and, he didn't. And therefore, it's good to see Dejounte Duncan like that. <laughs> I can't <laughs> tell. I can't tell, Lou. What color is that guy getting dunked on? Stop uh, it. He, Vooch is a cool guy. He's clear. Vooch is clear. <laughs> Oh, he gets a pass. Okay, fine. Fair enough. We were like the preacher. <laughs> That's going to do it for us today. All right, Michelle, tick tock. Uh, I got a flight games. to get you. Enjoy the games manana. We'll see you bright and early Monday. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back.